Hey guys, welcome to this week's video of Montana Haven. Alaska edition for sure. Look at this. We are surrounded by mountains right now. And this week we went, we're going on a little um, summer vacation here in Alaska and we're driving to different places in Alaska that we haven't gone yet. So we're really looking forward to it. Uh, today we went from Wasilla and we drove here to uh, we're about 20 some miles from Valdez, Alaska, and this is a beautiful area. We have not been here before, um, but we decided to camp up on this ridge and the sun just set behind the mountains and it is just beautiful here. There's a couple other people camped up on this pass. We're just over the top of Thompson Pass here in Valdez, going towards Valdez, but there's some snow up here you can still see. This is the end of July, but what a beautiful evening it is here just absolutely glorious. I'll show you around here a little bit. Just a perfect, perfect Alaska evening. Now I gotta show you a little bit closer view of where we're parked. I was going to park right here, but that would be way too mundane, so I'll show you where I parked. We're having dinner in the RV, and I thought this might be a good place to park. So there you can see a cliff that's quite a ways down there, and we're actually going to overhang the cliff while we sleep in our RV. And we do have the tires blocked just in case it would roll during the night. So we don't want that to happen. And I put the brake, set the brake. So we do have some rocks there, rocks on the other side. I think we're going to be good. So we're just simply going to open the back window and what a panoramic view we're going to have of these beautiful Alaska mountains. <laughs> He's a little too dangerous for my liking. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Mm. We're about done eating here, babe. Yep. It's kind of a mess. <laughs> Well, to this morning, it's a very foggy morning. You can't see out anywhere. So we're just hanging out over the abyss right there and there is nothing to see except just fog all the way around. So we're gonna head on into Valdez this morning and we're gonna see if we can find a place to go hiking or something to do. And maybe this fog will burn off. Welcome to Valdez, we're almost there. This is but one of the many phenomenal things that we're gonna see on this trip. This is a silty river because of all the runoff of the glaciers. But you guys, look at all the scenery behind me, it's just phenomenal. There are waterfalls coming down just all along this road right here. It is just, it's a beautiful area. Never been to Valdez, heard a lot about it, but just what a, what a fantastic place it's been. The scenery yesterday, I could make, you know, one entire video of just the footage just driving to Valdez, it's so pretty, but it would be too much. So I just have to pick and choose a little bit. So I take little snippets here and there and we can't stop every time there's something beautiful because everything is so beautiful. Okay, it's time to keep driving. Absolutely incredible, you guys. Look at this. I'm about to show you something. Get ready, get ready. Here it is. Bridal Veil Falls. Beautiful.
We're just checking out all the boats down here in Valdez. And it's so funny, but we ran into an old friend of ours right here. He's working on a fishing boat this summer. It was really cool to get to meet him, Rob. Just look at all those salmon. And these seals are just having a heyday. There's so much to eat, they're not even hungry. Here in Valdez, Alaska. There's the town of Valdez. Okay, we've said goodbye to Valdez. What a beautiful, spectacular place that is, especially on a sunny day. And we're looking at this old railroad tunnel. This was hand cut into the rocks in 1905. And the idea was to get a train uh, from here over to Kennecott Mine, which is where we're going next. Uh, but there was a gun battle and uh, it never got finished. Five companies were, were vying for the spot to get this rail tunnel in there. So this is all that's left of that 1905 uh, railroad era. What a cool deal. Going on a little bit of a hike. and how beautiful and spectacular it is. Okay, we're here at a place where we are staying for the night. There's a pond here. And we're just fishing a little bit to see if we can happen to get anything in here. Last swimmer out there, Avalon. Chloe was pretty chilly, she was turning blue. So she went to change. Just and Ethan are over on, on another stream fishing, so we'll see what if they had any luck. Wyatt hit one bite and that was it. Okay, did you get, catch anything? Yeah, right here. No way! Grayling. Grayling? Yep. Sweet, Ethan, good job. Show me the fin. That is so cool. Wow. 
Good job. Now, good morning. First things first, Wyatt and I and Avalon are out here together fishing before breakfast. And Justin and Ethan went further down the stream to a different place where they caught a nice one last night. So we are not having any luck and we're getting hungry. So I think we're going to head back and uh, get some breakfast that I think Priscilla's probably got cook cooked up or stewed together or scraped together, whatever she does to make do her magic. There's my family. They don't know I'm here watching. <laughs> yeah. Justin Ethan caught some nice fish. Hey, hold up your fish, Justin Ethan. Cool deal, guys. Nice grayling. I love it. Four of them. And we got skunked. Wyatt and Avalon and I. Well, we're heading down the road. And Chloe, what do you see? A baby moose and a mom moose. A baby moose and a mom moose. They're all the way over there. Let's see if we can see them. Wyatt, what's going on, bud? I caught a fish. Nice. What kind is it? Uh, I think it's a rainbow trout. Hey, it does look like it. Nice, bud. We just stopped beside the road here and uh, saw some moose, so we decided, hey, there's some fish in here. Let's try fishing. Very nice, Wyatt. Good job. Yay, Evelyn, you got one. <laughs> yep. Nice. Good job. Okay, Wyatt's going to catch one. Fish on for Ethan. <laughs> nice going. It's a gateway to McCarthy, you guys. 60 miles. And we're there. One lane road right here. Here we're driving across the Copper River. And you can see fish wheels up there further. A little hard to see in here probably. There's some people dip netting out there. Copper River sockeye salmon are the prized salmon in all of Alaska. Except kings are right up there too, but people love sockeye salmon from the Copper River. Well, on the way to McCarthy, these folks were stopped beside the road, so they had a flat. So we went and uh, we went and, and uh, helped them change their tires. So here we go, off down the road we go. Guys, would you check this out? We are in McCarthy, Alaska, camping with this view tonight. This is beautiful. Right there in the distance, you can see the Kennecott Mine, the old abandoned Kennecott Mine. And look at that glacier right there. What a view, what a view. Here's a, a teepee, I guess, that they rent out that nobody's staying in. What a beautiful view. Kids already trying to fish down there. We'll probably go up to the mine tomorrow. See there, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a little bit of a rainbow up there. Oh, there's the other part of the rainbow. Look at that. You see it right there over the top of the mountain. Beautiful. It's time to put these bad boys on the, on the grill. Hey, 
Okay, derailing a net pan. Trout in this one. Woo! That's hot. The flower on there. Salt pepper. Delish, delish, delish. The pepper. Turn them around and do the same. There goes a the fox. There it goes. Wow. Gonzo Schwartz. Right there it is, right there it is, right there it is, right, there it is, right in the middle of the screen. Is it a wolf? It's not, it's black. It has a white tail or something. Like the okay. tip of it, the tail. There it goes. We just spotted him again on the road. There he goes. Yep, look at that. Love taking the hikes out here with my family. So special. Wow, what a beautiful evening it is. Guys, check out these rocks. See how it's these huge boulders that we're walking through in this area. They're about the size of people. But they're made out of all these different rocks put together into one rock. They got compressed and rolled into one. So interesting why that is. Well, good morning. We're headed to the Kennecott Mine this morning in the town of McCarthy, the town of Kennecott. We've got to cross this footbridge to get to the other side here. There is no access to the other side. Although there is a bridge down there for commercial use that people can go across if they pay for it, but I don't think many people use it. So we're going to take a hike, maybe a shuttle, I'm not sure, we'll see. This is the McCarthy River. What a raging river it is. All silty from the glaciers. And here we are. Old fashioned buildings. There's a hotel. Okay, we're here, as you know, in this town of McCarthy, Alaska. And you're probably wondering, what is with this town? I don't know if any of you have seen the movie or the video series, TV series uh, called Edge of Alaska. This was, I think, started maybe, I could probably have my dates wrong. I think it went from like 2012 to like 2018, something like that. And it was basically just a TV series, but it was based on this little old town of McCarthy. And it dates back to like 100 years ago, roughly, I think, or over 100 years now when there was a, a huge copper mine up here and it was the largest in Alaska. I think maybe largest, don't quote me, but maybe the world or at least the United States or something, it was huge. And this town sprang up overnight kind of. And eventually they ran out of um, the it was different reasons. I think the price of ore dried up and, but they, they made a lot of money with it while it was going. But so this, this town of McCarthy popped up and now it's kind of the remnants of it uh, still here. So there's my family standing on the edge of the general store right there. So we're gonna go in and have some espresso here. We're gonna take the shuttle up to the actual Kennecott mine. Uh, that was, there was a mother load mine in the side of the mountain. And then I think they like did the, I don't know what they did, recrushing it and whatever, getting ready to ship out at this facility that we're gonna go. So we're, we thought about taking a four and a half mile walk up there. But we're thinking now of just um, taking a shuttle up there and then um, maybe walking a couple miles to the glacier. Um, that's also up there. So we're going to do that and then go see where it leads from there. Ready for I'm ready for coffee. <laughs> so we just wanted to tell you a little story. We met someone here 
in McCarthy mm -hmm. that watches our videos and just a neat uh, young woman with four little boys. Yep. Set and, of twins. Yeah, there was a set of twins and they wore these little rubber glasses like Wyatt wears. <laughs> So it was very sweet to meet her. Oh yeah, her name was Hannah. Yeah. And it was just so cool. She was almost a lifelong resident. I think she said she was lived here since she was five years old. But they have a homestead here that they built up here, mm -hmm. completely off grid. Just so neat. To, I love like to meet people that are from an area, mm -hmm. and you really hear their story. And I just, I love that. I think it's great that people actually. I mean, you know, we can't live in last, but we're not off grid. You know, they haul their water and all that. So I think yeah. it's just so cool that yeah. you actually like real authentic people. Mm -hmm. But anyways, we're here in Kennecott, uh, the town, the little uh, site of Kennecott right now. This is where they brought the mine from like the motherload mines, different mines. I think there were three mines of ore actually that they brought here and they, I don't know what they did, smelted it and, and produced it. Yeah. And whatever. So we're going to walk through the town and then we're going to take a two hour hike to Root Glacier, I think it's called. Is it two miles? I think it's two miles one way and then two yeah. miles back, so four miles Yeah, to trip. the glacier, so that'll yeah. be fun. We are in the community hall right here. Looks like a place where they had like movies and dancing and stuff like that. This is really interesting. See these benches? Priscilla and I grew up sitting every Sunday on benches just like this in church. I have never seen benches quite like this other than by the Amish, so that is very interesting. Exactly the same, except our legs folded up. I don't think these legs fold. Nope, they don't fold, but that is, it's very cool. There you look out and see the hotel over there. It's just a very neat old town. So this was, I just was reading up on it a little bit more, and they said the ore was uh, discovered in 1900, and then they, everything closed up 38 years later. Here we're just checking out some old buildings here. And you know what I really love is this old post and beam stuff. I would love to buy an old barn or something like this, take it all apart and put it back together again. That would be so cool. You can see there's some new stuff they added, but just love this old style. Would we make it into a house? Yeah, make it into a house. <laughs> yep, take it back, put it, take it apart, put it back together into a house. Just so cool, love that, just love it. This was like the power plant in here. Just crazy, ah, oh, amazing, amazing. Look at these huge, probably steam, yep. Steam engines, so cool. It's almost a uh, hundred years old. I guess it'd be more like 80 years old or so. Wow. Wow, this is cool. Nice. Our first good view of the glacier here. That's where we're gonna go, probably another half to three quarter mile over there. See some people way out there, little dots.
Heading back off the mountain. What a fun time that was, wow. Now we wanna catch the three o'clock shuttle. So we don't have to walk the five miles all the way back. So we're gonna just kinda run back. Is it five miles? Well, it's from five miles from Kennecott to our camper. Oh, right. So we wanna yeah. catch the shuttle back. Right. So we don't have to walk that distance. Yeah. And we're almost home. Wow, we were way over at that glacier. <laughs> Surprising autumn. Way over to that mine site and we came all the way back here. Now we have, now we can look forward to 60 miles of gravel washboardy road with a little bit of that uh, pavement. Oh, that's a long ways out there. Hours and hours of driving because you can't go too fast. But here we go, pack up and leave. Well, tonight we're camped on the Copper River here by Chitna. And there's obviously nothing in here that they can catch, but they just wanted to fish because they think it's so much fun to fish. And I'm making some burgers outside here. And here's a grouse that we happened to hit while driving, so we went back, grabbed it, and processed it real quick. So we'll have some burgers and grouse, I guess. And enjoy the scenery and sleep here tonight. Good morning everyone. It is I think Thursday morning today and this was our view last night right here on the kind of the confluence of the Chitna and the Ch Copper River I believe and uh, we're getting ready to take off. The family's still kind of getting up a little bit and uh, right here's our RV. So we are I'm gonna start driving and we'll see how far we get. We, we'd like to get up all the way up to Denali today but that's quite a ways. Um, it's like 11 hour drive so we're gonna just drive a while and see how far we get and see what happens it's gonna be an adventure so welcome aboard it's back again to our fishing spot down here at the, this little lake Chloe let's keep going down here a little bit Chloe's getting a pretty good caster she's already caught a fish this morning on another little pond a little grayling mm, good cast Chloe Okay, let's see if we can get one there. Oh, oh yeah, well, Chloe, 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 you got one. Yes, Chloe, good job. Whoa, way to go, nice and easy. Bring it in, bring it in, Chloe. Okay, see if we can pick it up, pick it up. Oh, pick it up, oh, there you go, up, 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 over. Good job, Chloe, that's a big one too. Uh -uh. Nice, all by herself. Nice, Chloe. Oh, did it get you? Oh, yeah. It's coming oh. loose, oh, 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 oh wow. Had the hook in her hand a little bit. Good job, Chloe. Sorry, that hurt. Whew. Okay. Get that fish. Nice going, girl. She's got my coffee sticker on her hand. Way to go. Okay, let me take a picture. Whoa, jump right out of your hand. Chloe strikes again. Yay, good job, Chloe. She's catching fish. Nobody else is catching fish. Chloe and Avalon, Chloe, I mean, Wyatt and Avalon haven't caught any yet. Good job. Oh, that's a nice big one, Wyatt. Good job. That's a dandy. Ooh. Nice going. Someone is excited to tell mom she caught three fish. <laughs> she is so excited. Oh, that is so cute. She outfished everybody. Well, plans have changed. We were on our way um, to the Denali Highway. When all of a sudden, kapow, there goes a tire, a front tire this time. We put our spare on and the valve is kind of leaking. So we stopped by a tire shop and the news is bad. They can't get any mm -hmm. new tire in until tomorrow morning. So we're just stuck in Glen Allen for, yeah, around Glen Allen for the day. So now we came to the St. Uh, Elias Visitor Center. Yeah. And we're just going to walk around, check this out, maybe do a little bit of fishing. <laughs> I guess we'll just hang out. Just take it easy. Yeah. That's the way it goes. <laughs> Thank you. 
There we go. Check it out. No way. Nice. Wow. Whoa. Fish. Perfect. So cool. Is that even basil? Better, that yeah. Yes. Uh -huh. um, I yes. love it. Yes, wow, that is tight. Okay, why? Well, that is so tight. Hey guys. Okay, so you see what we're doing here. We got a vacuum sealing machine, and I cannot tell you how excited I am about this vacuum sealing machine. So we finally, we had always just bagged our stuff through um, like uh, freezer bags, Ziploc freezer bags. Finally about a year or so ago, I told Priscilla, we have to get a vacuum sealer. So we were in Walmart, uh, I mean in uh, Costco, let's, let's get one there. So yeah, we bought one, it was like a hundred bucks, a food saver. And we would seal stuff and we just were not happy with it. It would not seal completely. Well, it just didn't have the power. It was a homeowner's situation. So we decided to get a chamber vacuum sealer and I am so excited about this just check it out look at this completely tight extremely tight and very well sealed so I'm gonna recommend this Vivor matter of fact I put the link where you guys can buy this in the description box this is a Vivor they have uh, multiple different ones I think this one um, this was one of the larger ones you can get smaller ones too but i am very happy with this machine basically all we had to do is get it out of the box put oil in it and plug it in and it was ready to go it was already preset you can adjust the vacuum time the sealing time and the cooling time in the front here you can do dual seal if you want um i think this is a great great vacuum sealer. we're going to seal all our meat from now on that we're gonna, you know, uh, put away raw. So we do, Priscilla does a lot of canning, and we also have a freeze dryer, we'll talk about that a little bit later, um, but we're going to do a lot of, uh, like any fish and stuff, right? We're not gonna freeze dry fish. Uh, we have to like kind of, we would wanna cook it before we, or prepare it before we freeze dry it. So just to get this, you know, fresh in the freezer, uh, vacuum sealing is the way to go for us. So. Guys, I know there's a lot of vacuum sealers out there. There's others that are probably just fine, but we're, I'm very happy with this one. Great, I'm gonna recommend it. Guys, if you need a vacuum sealer, go to bmore.com, go on the link below actually in the description box. I think you guys get a discount. Yes, you do, you get a discount if you click on the link uh, that they actually provided me. They said I can put a link in there and you guys will get a discount. So go check it out and hopefully you guys enjoy this as much as we do if you're you know, foraging and you get all your process your meat and stuff. One other feature that, that we just noticed is you can actually take this tray out and now the chamber is a lot deeper if you have like maybe bolt things that you're um, sealing. So if you have something that's not as thick like our fish and you just put that in there. Now so um, we seal both rockfish and um, fish that we salmon that we caught in the Kenai River. All right so now thanks for watching this and back to the regular video. Some mergansers came by to say hi. Well, good morning. It's Friday morning. And originally we had planned to be home tonight, but we are approximately 300 miles from home the way we are planning to go. So we are a long ways from home. If we went straight home, like maybe we should, then we'd be about three hours from home. <laughs> but we weren't, we weren't gonna take the long scenic route. That is probably as rough as McCarthy Road that we were just on, which was really rough. 
We just lost one hubcap. That's all we lost, uh, fortunately. But we're here this morning. We spent the night at a, yeah, you saw there beside the creek at a campground. And now uh, we're waiting for our tires to get changed. So we walked to the IGA, picked up a couple things we needed, and we're just hanging out until our tires get changed. Then we're gonna go north and take the take the Richardson Highway up to up to the Denali Highway. So the Richardson Highway goes from Valdez all the way up to uh, Delta Junction, Alaska, and then part ways up it there's the Denali Highway that connects Richardson Highway over to Parks Highway. So in case you're kind of wondering. That's kind of the geographical location. It's 131 miles, I think, the Denali Highway, and 111 of that is unpaved. It's gravel. So, heard it could be rough, but it's very beautiful and scenic as well. So, we're simply going to drive, probably take our time. I felt like we got our brains rattled pretty good on the McCarthy Road, but uh, we're kind of suckers for punishment, I guess. So, I did end up getting all new tires on this thing because driving up from montana we had multiple spares along and it kind of got mismatched the tires weren't that great the guy kind of laughed and said you'll never make it across the denali highway with these tires so i said well we gotta replace one let's just replace them all they were kind of rough shape anyways been getting flat so you guys know so we're back looks like they're still working on it right there and uh to be a little while so we're just hanging out until it gets done then we're gonna hit the road so we're checking this place out so this is uh called myers lake roadhouse well it's actually not right here it's actually over there but about every 20 miles about as far as a man could walk back in the old days they had a roadhouse where you could stay for the night i'm guessing this is one of the original ones so we saw it of some sort maybe it's we're just checking it out see what it is maybe it's a little church or something yeah little church Oh, neat. Wow, very cool. Probably was used originally for like a church or a school or something. Just another little rest stop here. The scenery is just exquisite. Went through a little bit of a thunderstorm. Wow, it's, it's a beautiful road. A land of many lakes and lots of mountains. More spectacular scenery. Phenomenal. And part of the gang is fishing. And part of the gang is picking blueberries. And videoing and looking what looking for grizzly bears and eating blueberries and there's a couple of us that are actually picking apparently i'm not because i'm videoing but look at all these huck blueberries everywhere here we picked a couple amounts of those the last little bit here picking these and maybe we'll be able to make some jam or something but what a view from this place what a view I have no choice but to stop and video a little bit. It is all too glorious and beautiful. Endless vistas. Wow. So much to see and absorb. Well, tonight we're camped at this Really cool spot. Look at that big ring around the sun. It's a very beautiful spot here. This is our view. I'm actually on top of the camper right now. There's the front of the RV. Panorama vistas. We had dinner a little earlier. The children were fishing for an hour or so, but it wasn't a great place to camp. So we came to another spot and we're Boys started a fire, we're going to be making some s'mores. And this is gonna be the last evening. Tomorrow we're gonna to go home. A little sad, but it was great. You know, we don't have any levelers on this old beast. She's 27 years old, and 
so we just gonna we're just gonna sleep just like that with our you know our feet hanging downhill and our head sky high it's just the way it goes Somebody's being photogenic. <laughs> Chloe, it's a little chilly out here for you with that little sundress. That's a tall fireweed, wow. Way bigger than you. <laughs> We've got some Hershey's, graham crackers, and some sparkling water. It's a bit socked in this morning. But we had a good night's sleep and we're out here picking berries before we take off. And I spotted a couple moose down there in those meadows. By the time I had the spotting scope set up, they were already gone. I just could see one a little bit. One was at least a cow. I'm not sure what the other one was, but it's cool uh, to see wildlife out here. Well, we're gonna head on into Cantwell after a little while here, after we're done picking berries, and probably have some breakfast and then just hit the road and drive home, get home in three, four hours. We're here in Cantwell now. We finally made it through. We're into pavement, and we stopped at this little uh, sandwich spot called Jam Jams, and we haven't tasted it yet, or I haven't, but the food looks really good. Yeah, check it out. This is like a steak and egg sandwich. <laughs> yep, they got like this Cuban, Cuban, we're switching out with uh, Avalon and Nurse Cake and Aid. So, yep, we're going to be uh, home later today, but enjoying these sandwiches and then we're off.